This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers. Within the Christian world today, among many denominations, there is a considerable amount of debate on just what the gospel of Jesus Christ really is. Some are totally convinced all you need to do is accept Jesus Christ and have love in your heart and you will be rewarded regardless of how you behave. Could this be true? The Bible is clear about the message that Jesus brought, and admittedly, there were many reasons for his visit. But undoubtedly, a major item was to help us understand God's plan for us, personally, and just exactly how he would accomplish that. But because the gospel has multiple angles, we must also understand making it stick in our minds requires one to learn the expectations of what Jesus Christ explained God has for us, because this too is part of the gospel. Knowing what God expects and what's necessary to do is a guaranteed means of helping the gospel to stick. Yes, the gospel is filled with instruction and advice, and if followed, will assure us entry into God's kingdom, which is both His as well as our goal. So stay with us as we explore some details of how to make the gospel stick on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our families, to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Mike James. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Armor of God. We're glad you could join us for today's program. What we're going to talk about today is making the gospel message stick. And what we will do is we will look at some techniques that I believe you will find in the Bible on how they made that message stick because we want to use as many means as we can to try to make this gospel message stick. Some of the material that we will be addressing today comes from a book titled Make It Stick by Chip and Dan Heath and they talk about six ways to make a message, any message, stick with an audience. Now again, depending upon the message we're going to have some times where the message sticks and sometimes when it doesn't. But we want to see that what Heath, the Heath brothers have come up with in their book is actually found in the pages of the Bible when we see how the gospel message was sent out, how it was talked about, and we'll bring this all together at the close of the program by summarizing what these six particular methods are. To get things rolling, what I'd like to do is I'd like to turn to a scripture, and it's over in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1 and verse 15. Now this is on the day of Pentecost, the New Testament church is beginning, and it says, Acts, 15, Acts chapter 1 verse 15, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about a hundred and twenty. Now think about this for a minute. Jesus Christ had just left the earth. He had been preaching and teaching for about three and a half years. And yet there were only 120 dedicated believers together here on Pentecost. Now there may have been some others out there, but who would have been the greatest evangelist of all time? No doubt it would have been Jesus Christ, yet he could not get many more than 120 to believe in his message as dedicated followers and believers. So there's no doubt that the gospel message is a difficult message for some to listen to. More evidence of this can be found in the book of Luke. I just want to show you one scripture there in Luke on the gospel message. It's over in Luke chapter 8 and I'm going to pick it up beginning in verse 9. It says, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, 
that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. So we have other scriptures in the Bible that talk about the fact that this gospel message would not be readily understood. We know in John chapter 6 it talks about the fact that God has to draw you to this message. But we know from scripture we have to be out there pushing this message. In Matthew 24 and 14, it tells us that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world and then the end will come. We know from Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20 that Jesus wanted us to make disciples of all nations. So we have to get the gospel message out there. It's a difficult message for some to understand. We want to find as many means, as many ways as we can to make it a more palatable message. That is the purpose of today's program. What I want to do right now, before we really get into the meat of today's program, is I want to offer you some free literature and also a free CD for today's program. The literature I'd like to offer you today is titled, The Real Reasons Why Christ Came to This Earth. Why did Christ really come to this earth? A lot of people are confused about that. This booklet will help you understand that. We also want you to get the free full-length sermon CD titled, Making the Gospel Stick. This particular CD will go into detail on the subject matter we will be discussing on today's program. To get both of these items free of charge, all you need to do is call us toll-free 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can order by going to our website. Go to www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. You can also go to our website to learn more about our weekly sermon broadcast. Go to www.cgi.org. Now, we were talking a little bit earlier at the beginning of today's program on the gospel message and how difficult it is for some to understand it, for some to accept it, yet we have this catch-22 where God demands that as believers, as Christians, we need to work to get that gospel message out there. So what we want to do on today's program is mention six points to keep in mind when you are bringing this gospel message to other people. And hopefully these six points will help make that message more palatable, more interesting to people we come into contact with. And we will also notice that the Bible uses these six methodologies to get that message out there. And we'll bring that to you through some examples within the scriptures. So let me just talk as to why the message is important and then we'll discuss ways of getting that message out there. When we look out at the world today, we see all kinds of squalor. We see wars, rumors of wars. We see things happening in the Middle East that date back to the Middle Ages, people cutting people's heads off. We see people dying from starvation in Sub-Saharan Africa. We see the distended bellies of little children and the pencil-thin legs of these same little children, and it affects us. It, it matters to us that these crazy things are happening in this world, but the only hope for this world is the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Because what is in that message is a message that all of this craziness that's going on in the world today will be done away with when Jesus Christ comes back to rule and reign on planet Earth. This message can give people hope in a hopeless world, and that's one of the reasons why we want to get this message out to the world. I believe you would agree with me that all this craziness in the world really gets to folks, and they need some hope, something that will help them understand that lasting peace and prosperity will be coming to this world. That gospel message can do that, and Jesus Christ will literally return to this earth he will rule and reign. Things that are going on today will disappear. The law of God will come forth from Jerusalem. People will observe it 
and it will be a renewed and transformed world that we're looking at. So this is a great message to take to the world and we need to establish that that was the message that the apostles and Jesus Christ were teaching and we can easily do that in our Bibles if we turn over to Mark chapter 1 and verse 14 which states this now after that John was put in prison Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of God is at hand repent and believe the gospel so there's no doubt about what message Jesus Christ was preaching. He was preaching the message of the kingdom of God, and you can go through your Bible and find out what that message is. I just gave you some of what that message is in my preceding statement. So this is the gospel message we have to take to the world, and we know in Matthew chapter 28, 19, and 20, Jesus tells his disciples to teach and preach what he has taught and preached to them. So that is the gospel of the kingdom, but it also includes the story of Jesus Christ. Who and what Jesus Christ is, what He's doing, and what He will be doing in this world. Now not only did Jesus Christ preach this while He was alive, but the apostles preached this same thing when Jesus was gone from the scene. And we can establish that fact over in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 8 and verse 12, we read this, But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So this message that we're trying to get to stick with people is not only a message about the kingdom of God, but it is also a message about Jesus Christ. So I just want to make sure we understand what we mean by the gospel message. Now let's talk about how we can try to get this gospel message to stick in a better way than maybe it does with some of the methods we have tried in the past. Now the first example I'd like to bring up, and again, these examples are brought forward in the book by Chip and Dan Heath, make it stick. In fact, they provide numerous, numerous examples of each of these six major points that I'll be making on today's program. The first point they make, though, is you've got to keep your message simple. It's got to be a simple message. When you think of the gospel message, it is a simple message. It's a message of a transformed world through the reign and rulership of Jesus Christ and it is also a message of who and what Jesus Christ is. Now there are a lot of subplots to those two main points of the message, but when you read through your Bible, when you read something like Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God did this, God did that. That's simple and basic, folks. When you think of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not steal. It's simple, it's basic. Anyone can understand that. The message has to be simple. So think about the people you are preaching this message to. Try to keep it at their level. What does simple mean for them? Another major thing to keep in mind when we deliver a message to someone is there has to be some unexpected quality, some unique quality to the message. The brain loves things to be different, a little bit uh, changed up at times. That focuses the brain's attention. When everything continues in the same way, the brain will lose interest. When you shake up the brain a little bit with something unexpected, the brain focuses in on that particular information. Is the gospel message unexpected and different? I believe it is when you begin to understand the truth of that gospel message. That the Sabbath is not on Sunday, 
It's actually on Saturday. That Jesus was not born on December 25th, he was probably born in the fall of the year. These are nuanced teachings within that gospel message that can shake some people up for their unique quality. But another thing that is unique about the gospel message can be addressed in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says there in verse 12, Now if Christ be preached that He rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? This idea of the resurrection of the dead was not well known at the time it began to be preached. Many believed that a soul would leave your body and go on to some sort of an afterlife. They shook things up a little bit with this idea of the resurrection. There were some who believed in it, but many did not. So that resurrection message is unique. It's different when you understand that heaven is not the reward of your immortal soul. Jesus Christ is going to bring life to you on this earth in a new transformed spiritual body. Now, I'm going to turn over to Acts chapter 17 to show you something else about this unexpected nature of the message. Notice what Paul does with some folks who had all kinds of different religious ideas. He goes to Athens in Acts chapter 17, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 16. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? So they didn't like his message. They thought it was confusing because it was unique. It was different from what these Greeks were used to learning about religions. They said this, He seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. So again, Jesus knew how the mind of man works. The apostles knew how the mind of man works. So they were delivering this message which was a bit different because it was talking about this God who related to them through the resurrection. Now, that was point two, the uniqueness or unexpectedness of the message. Let's go to, on to point three, which is to make your message concrete. Now, you can understand concreteness in a number of different ways. Let me focus you in on what I mean by making your message concrete. I'm going to continue reading in Acts chapter 17 and pick it up in verse 19. And they took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. And the Areopagus was a place they went to have discourse on various philosophies and religions. Verse 20, For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. So again, that uniqueness caught their attention. Now, verse 21, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Here's what I mean by concreteness. Paul is using something they have knowledge about to relate something new to them. This is what the Heath brothers mean by concreteness. This is what Paul knows is concrete. He's going to use what they know to tell them something different. And that is what I mean by concreteness. Make the message concrete. Many of our brethren in the Sunday keeping churches believe in Jesus Christ. Let's use that commonality to then explain what's in the Bible. Because many of them believe the Bible is God's Word. Let's use that Bible to show them what's really in here. Make the message concrete. That is point number three. Let's move on 
to point number four, and that is to make your message credible. Now, there are various ways to make your message credible. The more you know about the message, the more credible you will be in delivering that message. So you've got to know your Bible. You've got to study it. You've got to study the history around Christianity. You've got to know about other religions to be able to make your message more palatable, more credible for people to listen to it. Now, did Jesus have credibility with his message? I believe he did. He was God. If you have faith in what this word says, he's telling you he's God and he's delivering this message. So I'm going to perk up and I'm going to listen to that credibility. But he also made his message credible by performing miracles, as did the apostles. God knew in order for this message to take, he had to make it credible. When someone performs a miracle and then they tell you something, many of us will listen. Again, we need to be careful about that. We know from the Bible message that Satan will be able to perform miracles. But again, I believe that that helped with his credibility with some people. But there are various ways we can make our message credible with other people. The Bible itself has great internal evidence that it is a credible message, that this was written thousands of years ago by the individuals who believed in this man who rose from the dead. You can learn more about that by many of our pieces of literature and CDs which address those particular points. So let's move on to point number five. In order for your message to stick, you need to be hitting on people's emotions. Now, does God do that with His message? Let me turn over to Romans 6 and verse 23, which reads like this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No matter who you are, death is going to affect you at one point or another in your life. And God uses death. God uses that reality check to try to bring us closer to Him. He makes us aware of the fact we're all going to die. We're all aware of this throughout our lives. And when we realize this and start to think about it, most of us, unless you're psychotic or sociopathic, you wonder, why am I here? What am I doing here? And this will begin for many folks to lead them to look into religion, to look into Christianity, to try to figure out what life is all about. He also hits our emotions when we think about the second resurrection. The resurrection after Jesus Christ comes to this earth, we'll call that the first resurrection, when all the true believers in Christ are raised from the dead, come to this earth with Him when they meet Him in the air to set up His kingdom. But there's a second resurrection at the end of that thousand-year kingdom. Think about the scene when all these dead people who did not believe in Jesus Christ rise from the dead, see their loved ones who may now be spiritual beings, and realize who and what Jesus Christ is. Will that not be an emotional situation? Oh yeah, it will. And God is going to use that to get His message across to those people, hitting them with that emotional appeal that many of them will come to believe in His truth and follow Him. Now, another point that we need to understand with making our message stick, the sixth point I will address today is try to tell stories when you deliver your message. There's a lot of research today on how the brain is affected by storytelling. Both the left and the right hemisphere are entangled whenever you hear a story. When you're hearing just a strict lecture on facts and figures, usually only one side of the brain is being impacted. But another major thing about stories is stories create simulations in your brain. 
There are something called mirror neurons in our brain that are stimulated through storytelling because the brain actually creates a simulation of what it is hearing while it hears that. Simulation is one of the best ways to teach something. Experiential learning is the best way, but once you get past experiential learning, to simulate something in your brain is as good, almost as good, as experiential learning. Now think about that for a moment. All these stories in the Bible, if we continue to read them, what happens with your brain is it creates new neural pathways that relate to this storytelling in the Bible, and you start living your life more in tune with this Word if you keep your nose in this Word. And God knew that because He created the brain. It's amazing what science has discovered discovering about the brain today. So I want to reiterate the six major points I made today about how, make, how to make that message stick with people. To make that message stick, you want it to be simple. You want it to be credible. You want it to be unexpected. You want it to be concrete. You want to hit emotions and you want to use storytelling just like Jesus did. You can go to Luke 12, Luke 13, Luke 14, Luke 15. Throughout the book of Luke, Jesus uses story after story after story to explain the finer points of His Gospel. I want you to make sure you get that CD, you get that booklet I talked about earlier. I want you to get the booklet, The Real Reasons Why Christ Came to This Earth, and I want you to get that CD, Getting the Gospel to Stick or Making the Gospel Stick. To get both of those items free of charge, all you need to do is call us toll free at 1-888-578. 8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can go to order by visiting our website. Go to www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. You will find our email there on the website. You can say exactly what you want. And let me just tell you once again what you want is the CD, Making the Gospel Stick, and the book, the literature, The Real Reasons Why Christ Came to This Earth. We've got to get this gospel message out to the world. We've got to keep doing all the things that we can to get that gospel message out there. These six points can help you deliver that message in a better way to the people you are interacting with. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Armor of God. Remember, put on the whole armor of God so you can stand in that evil day. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas 75701 or call toll free at 1-888-578-8791 or call one 939 2929 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by The Church of God International and supported by our viewers.